Exploration gameplay isn't even in the game yet and people are picking sides like a square dance is about to happen. I'm here to tell you that either both these ships, the Carrick and the Odyssey, are awesome or neither of them will be. Welcome to our new series, Star Citizen Wars, where we compare and contrast ships, careers, roles, vehicles, and pretty much anything else that exists in the verse. This playlist settles the debate, destroys the debate, changes the debate paradigm, or creates a new debate. Let's start with what you all don't want to hear. When it comes to exploration, the Misk Odyssey is better at it than the Carrick. So as far as exploration, it really is the Carrot Killer. You need to leave. However, and this is a big however, that doesn't necessarily mean what you might think it means. First, here's three reasons why the Odyssey is a better exploration ship. The biggest reason is it can mine and refine gas and quantanium indefinitely allowing you to go as far as your food, water, and parts last you in the verse. The Starfarer, the ship meant to literally be a gas miner, can't even do that. Neither can the Carrick. Now don't worry, all the things the Carrick can do are coming as well, so hold your horses. Ahem! <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. You can go further into the void with this ship, and after all, exploration is really about how far you can go at its core. What's that saying? New civilization. Boldly go where no man has gone Boldly before. Go where no the second biggest reason is offense and defense. The Odyssey has a capital shield generator and three size five remote turrets. Not to mention it has four size three missile racks. The Carrick has four size fours, no missiles, and two large shields. Mind you, shields don't stack as I used to think. They go into a combined shield pool which averages their stats together. That means the Odyssey can keep up way longer than the Carrot can. The Odyssey can stand and fight light ships with those missiles and medium to large ships with those size fives. The Carrot might be able to last with a few fighters because it has those retractable bridge shields. But let's say you can't fight and you need to run because it's two redeemers attacking you. The Odyssey can not only run further, but its shields will hold up while you're shifting from SCM to nav mode, once master modes come online anyway, for the larger ships. That's before we talk about the fact that you can fit an Ares in the hangar to take on large ships. Which brings me to the third reason the Carrick is not as good at exploration as the Odyssey. What everyone seems to be missing, the Odyssey has a tractor beam. We're seeing how important these are now in game as of 3.22. Being able to move heavy things, which handheld tractor beams can't do, and do so without exiting the ship is going to be extremely useful for when you find things out in space and need to move them into cargo or just move them out of your way. Ask anyone who plays Star Citizen as of 3.22. Tractor beams are by far one of the best features implemented into the game yet. And here's a bonus reason. The minimum crew for the Carrick is four. The minimum crew for the Odyssey is one, meaning the pilot can control the turrets, and missiles in the Odyssey, which is not possible in the Carrick. The Odyssey is basically a capital class solo ship. Now, will each ship be better with crew? Absolutely, but only one of them can be operated solo, truly operated solo. Now let's talk about what the Carrick has that the Odyssey does not. Let's start with the obvious, repair drones. Having drones that can repair your ship without exiting the ship is going to be one of the Carrick's best features. Also, these might end up being able to be replaced with different types of drones like refuel and rearm drones. Now that's unconfirmed, but the Odyssey has zero drones. The Carrick also has modularity swaps for its cargo bays, on top of carrying 81% more cargo than the Odyssey. Now, when you swap the cargo bays, obviously you lose that cargo, but regardless of what the modularity ends up being, the Odyssey does not have any modularity. Once we have details, we can say how much this feature will affect the distance between the Odyssey and the Carrick, but you can imagine swapping that cargo for a science or research bay. The Carrick also has a cartography deck, which gives it a buff to its ability to chart jump points and scan, 
which is extremely important for an exploration ship. The Odyssey does not have a dedicated deck, nor does it have a cartography room. Oddly enough, the Odyssey has one more computer than the Carrick. Not sure what that means yet, though. Let's give a bonus reason to the Carrick, just to be fair. We have no idea what the armor class of the Odyssey will be, but the Carrick was made as a military ship and has that retractable bridge shield. Right now, the Carrick has the 14th best hull HP in the game, so my guess is it will have better armor. But since that is a guess, I'll say the real bonus reason is it comes with both an Ursa and a C8. That makes it a heck of a value on price and utility. The Odyssey does not come with any ships or vehicles. Now that we know the unique features on each, let me tell you what you came to hear. The Carrick will and is going to be a better multiple role ship. And like I said before, the Odyssey is a better exploration ship. The Carrick is for the person who wants to explore, but is more interested in the data and research part of exploration rather than deep space and the to infinity and beyond portion of exploration. Carrick owners rejoice in your ability to sell that jump point, nav point, and cartography data. The Q&A made a lot of Carrick owners feel safe and secure, but sounded like a bummer to a few people that upgraded from the Carrick when we talk about the Odyssey Q&A. Let me tell you two reasons why that shouldn't be the case. At least not yet. There were two major parts of the Q&A that took folks down. Finding out that it's not currently planned for the refinery to take mineable material from other ships, and that the Odyssey could not refuel ships other than those parked in its hangar. But, and this is an indeedly large, nicely shaped but, <laughs> Notice that I said not currently planned for the refinery to take mineable material. That doesn't mean it won't have the ability when it finally gets made. Even if not, then bring an expanse with you in the hangar when you want to go support a mining operation. As far as refueling other ships, I first ask, why do you need that? I have barely seen anyone use a Starfarer for refueling rather than just going to a base. And no other ship you bring with you will be able to travel as far as you anyway, because it'll run out of Quantanium or something. That being said, when we get our first small refueling ship, you'll be able to easily fit that into this Odyssey hangar as well. On top of that, my guess is that hangar size will actually grow a little bit because it's the same size as the Polaris hangar, which has also grown because of a rework. My major gripe with the Odyssey vs. Carrick is that mail slot for the Odyssey. We better have an observation capable room in that Odyssey or I will be highly upset, CIG. John Crew, this is directly aimed at you. Stop trying to make mail slot happen. It's not going to happen. Gretchen. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, I'm joking. But like, for real, whoever is responsible for that, please stop. I haven't met a single person that wants less pilot visibility, especially in a ship made to explore the stars. Lastly, let's talk about why we need both the Carrick and the Odyssey to succeed. At its core, I think exploration gameplay will become the center of the game. It's what will make all ships have a valid purpose in the game. When fuel begins to really matter, when there are hundreds of jump points, when there are uncharted points in space with enemies you've never faced, every ship in the game will need information on who, what, where, when, why, and how. You have an account with us? And how. If it's not fun to chart jump points and the Carrick is too limited in its ability to go far into space, then less people will chart and the game will suffer for it. If the Odyssey can do nothing except go far, instead of buying the ship, people will just wait until someone charts it, a space station is built with refueling capabilities, and then they'll go after the charting is done rather than buy an Odyssey. My vision for both ships' primary purpose is that the Odyssey is the tip of the spear that charts the long range path for the Carrick so that the Carrick will know where to stop for fuel when it goes out to map. The extra computer on the Odyssey is to store data on where the refuel points and other major points of interest are. The Carrick then comes out and uses its superior scanning cartography tech to get the more detailed and accurate information that the Odyssey may have missed on its run. Then they rinse and repeat. Both ships need to be fun to fly and fun to operate or a large piece of exploration gameplay will fail. So instead of arguing about which ship is better, we need to focus more on what the intended purpose of each ship is and why we want them both to succeed. Even if the Odyssey is the obvious and clear winner in the ship battle. Anyway, what do you think? Did I miss anything? Which one do you own and why? Am I bananas, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Or am I making some sense? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this one. See you in the next one. Peace.